Today is a special day because I bought my first new Gibson Les Paul in four years, which is actually a long time for me. And we're gonna unbox it together. Let's do it! All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle and what I do is I take awesome high gain related guitar gear, record it with a simple setup and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. And if you guys have been around for some of my belligerence over the past couple of years, you will know that I am a massive Gibson Les Paul fan. Yes, even though I am a metal and hardcore guy and even though hating on Gibson is currently the cool thing to do and for a lot of reasons, rightly so, that doesn't make me love the iconic Gibson Les Paul any less. And for a large part of my tone chasing career, I don't know what you want to call it. It's not a career. Uh, diving down the rabbit hole of tone chasing, the Gibson Les Paul has been a big part of my sound because after I got my first Les Paul, I kind of understood why people like them so much. And I'm sure that this video is going to spur a lot of discussion and probably a lot of arguments in the comments, and that's fine. Just keep it civil, guys. Keep it civil. You're allowed to disagree with me. I'm allowed to disagree with you. And as long as we keep things civil, there is nothing wrong with healthy discussion. When I got my first Les Paul, there was an immediate like difference in tone compared to the other guitars that I owned, which at the time were an LTD EC1000, um, an Agile AL3000, and I was honestly like uh, kind of against it. I, I wanted more metal looking guitars. I wanted more modern guitars with modern features and appointments that just looked cooler and belonged in the metal and hardcore scene. That was just where my mindset was at as at the time as a player. But long story short, I made a trade with my local guitar shop, uh, World of Music. I traded for a crank, <laughs> traded a JCM 800-2203 Kerry King for a crank revolution. Yes, I know. Worst trade in history. And I even had the chance to go back in and get my trade back, my, my 2203 Kerry King back, because the Crank Revolution died the second day that I owned it. Speaking of dying, the power just went out. Um, all right, well, that was interesting. <laughs> that was a really weird uh, timing coincidence. All right, anyways, back to my long-winded story. Uh, I ended up taking the crank back in and I had a bunch of store credit because that was back at the time when cranks were still in production and they were expensive. So I had like a thousand bucks to spend in store credit. So I'm just kind of looking around, you know, looking for something to buy. And Adam, who is now the guitarist in my band, Human Animal, was a big Gibson fan at the time. And he had been trying to uh, get me to get a Gibson guitar pretty much since the beginning of me playing guitar. And I was just kind of resistant to it, but finally I was like, all right, I'll try something. They had a cool Wine Red Les Paul Studio in there, and I plugged it into an amplifier, and at that first chord, it was like over for me. There was just an immediate like tonal difference, not only plugged in, but acoustically, the guitar just felt really resonant. Like there was just something about it where I just like connected with the guitar immediately. And you guys have seen that guitar on the channel many, many times because I still own it. Two headstock repairs later, still one of my favorite guitars. That was my introduction to the Gibson Les Paul. And after that, man, it was like, all I wanted to do was hunt down new Les Pauls for like multiple years. That's all I did was search for good deals on Les Pauls. I amassed a huge collection. I think at one time I had close to 20 Les Pauls. I had four Norlin era Les Paul customs. I had an 81 or an 84 Les Paul custom as well on top of my 2005 and my 2015 Les Paul custom, which is behind me. I even bought my first brand new guitar ever, a 2016 Gibson Les Paul traditional, which is right here. And it's still one of my favorite guitars, although it is in need of a setup uh, and an intonation, which is why you guys haven't seen it on the channel as much as, uh, as as I should be playing it, but this is absolutely one of my favorite guitars in the world. I mean, just look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. 
But anyways, um, yeah, I just, I had a huge collection and it got to the point where I was like, this is ridiculous because all I own are, you know, 20 single cuts and nothing else. And at the time I kind of would just stopped being into guitar gear. So I sold off a lot of my guitar gear and that included a big portion of my Les Paul collection. I went from 20 Les Pauls down to uh, 11. I think I have 11 right now. I think, actually, I think I had more than 20 because I'm down to like 13 Les Pauls right now, which is still obnoxious. I know, I know, I have mental problems, I get it. But anyways, I sold at least 10 Les Pauls because I had two standards that I sold. I had uh, a classic, a traditional pro that I sold. I sold all the vintage Les Paul customs because I just, honestly, I didn't really like them that much. So that was uh, the beginning of 2020 when I did all that, when I did all the selling off of my Les Paul collection, the ones that I just wasn't totally in love with enough to keep forever. But anyways, the ones that I have now are just phenomenal guitars that I will, I'll never sell them unless, you know, unless I am in a, a, the worst dire, most dire financial emergency. And even then I'll try to find other stuff to sell before I sell those. So yeah, I just had all the Les Pauls that I wanted. I wanted to try some other stuff and I found some amazing stuff in the process. But recently uh, I have been looking at the new Les Paul standards, the 50s and 60s standards ever since they changed their whole model lineup around in 2019. Um, you know, initially I was just like, whatever, I've got everything that I want now. But I've been really curious to try one of the newer models. I haven't, I haven't even laid my hands on any of the new Les Paul standards ever since they kind of completely redid uh, the Gibson lineup. So the other day when I did my 6505 1992 original video, I tuned up and set up a couple of my Les Pauls that I have not played in a long time for that video. And God, I just forgot how much I love them. I forgot how fun they are to play. I forgot how responsive and resonant they feel in the hands and it just, it ignited that flame all over again. So the first thing I did when I was done recording that video was I went upstairs, I went on Guitar Center's website and I started searching through the used section. Then of course, I found a good deal on something as you often do on Guitar Center's used website. I found a 2023 Gibson Les Paul Standard 60s model that literally looked like it was brand new. It had the perfect top on it. The top on Les Pauls are something that I always look at because if I'm gonna spend a couple grand on a guitar, it's gotta be right. And I'm a fan of the big flame tops. So I found what I feel is the right one. I won't know until I unbox it, but that's why we're here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing portion and let's check this guitar out because I am super excited. I've been impatiently waiting for the guitar to acclimate because it's like 20 degrees outside. So it's been in the house for uh, about 10 hours now and I'm not waiting any longer. We're doing this thing. So of course, I've got old Stabby here and we're gonna try to not go to the hospital today. And while I am unboxing this guitar, I would like to know what your thoughts on Gibson Les Pauls are. Uh, are you one of the many people who absolutely hate anything related to Gibson and think that they're overpriced junk? Or are you like me and think that they are the best guitars uh, on the planet? At least of the ones that I've actually gotten to play yet. I haven't played many of the newer boutique brands, but I don't know, for me it's just easier to spend money on Gibsons because I love historical value of things on top of everything else and just the history behind Gibson guitars, the history behind the Les Paul. I find all that stuff absolutely fascinating and that's just another thing that draws me to these guitars. But I understand that some people don't care about that and that's fine, you're not wrong. We're all allowed to have our own opinions and our own interests. And also the guitar was not fully uh, stationary in the box, it had a little wiggle room, so please God, let's hope it showed up in one piece. Finish up your Gibson Les Paul or Gibson Guitars hate piece in the comments because we're about to reveal this thing. And I'm gonna let you guys get the first look at it, okay? Special moment for me. Um, I always feel very pr privileged to be able to afford guitars like this and just all the gear and everything. Like it's uh, growing up poor and at one point homeless. It, it's cool for me to be able to do this stuff. So just, just know I don't take this for granted. So here we go. <laughs> Dude, the top is so beautiful. Oh, the pictures just don't even come close to doing it justice. Did you guys, I don't think you saw it in the camera. <sighs> um, dude, 
It's, it's literally like perfect. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Well, I hope it doesn't suck. I hope this guitar doesn't suck. All right, I'm gonna shut up. Uh, the fretboard's super dark. That's a huge thing for me too. All right, here we go. Here we go. You ready? Oh my god, look at that thing. <laughs> it's it's so perfect. It's dude the Oh man. The top looks so much better in person than it does in the pictures. And even in the pictures, I was just like, that's it. I'm so guys, I'm super happy right now. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, I don't know, being here to experience this moment with me. I'm Ah. <laughs> uh, so all right. All right, I'm gonna shut up for a second. Ah, it's so pretty. All right, give me a second. Uh, all the case candy was in the picture as well. I just wanna make sure everything's here. We've got the leather Gibson strap. Uh, we've got the amber switch tip, which is awesome because I put amber switch tips on all of mine anyways. Put that baby on. Dude, <laughs> I'm so excited. Got the polishing cloth. Uh, we've got another truss rod cover. The picture, they take a picture on the workbench. This literally looks like it was uh, taken by like a 1970s Polaroid. Uh, it looks awful. And yeah, here's our warranty card owner's manual. Okay, so everything is here. Guys, I'm, I'm so happy right now. I mean, just even if you hate Gibsons and you hate Gibson Les Pauls, just take a minute, be happy for your boy. I don't take moments like this lightly. Um, this is literally a dream guitar by by any measure for me. Like, it doesn't matter if it's not a custom shop. I don't care, man. A Gibson Les Paul Standard is a dream guitar for me. And this one just is absolutely exactly what I wanted. It, it was exactly what I wanted. So, I'm very, very happy at the moment. Very happy. But again, let's hope it doesn't suck. Because as of right now, it could just be eye candy and I'll turn around and sell it. I've had a couple Les Pauls in the past that were beautiful, but they just, you know, they didn't speak to me. So, man, it is, it is in like perfect condition. Now, whenever, oh, we got a little chip on the back here and some buckle rash. So this was played, but that, that doesn't bother me one bit. I could care less about that. Yeah, 2023, made in the USA. This guitar is absolutely beautiful. From the back, from that buckle rash, this thing got played in its short life. This is a 2023 model. So, full disclosure guys, I paid $1,700 for this guitar. Um, when it comes to, oh my God, dude, I can't stop looking at it in the camera, sorry. I'm not even, I'm not even looking at the camera. Uh, the camera doesn't matter to me. Um, one of the first things I will note though, is the nut, you guys aren't gonna be able to see this on the camera. The nut is a mile off the fretboard. Like, Gibson, come on bro, do better. <laughs> Luckily, this is something that is easily fixed. And I'm probably, I believe that they come with Graph Tech nuts now, so I can just pop this off. They no longer have the stupid Tech Toy nuts or whatever the crappy material that they were using for the longest time is. Um, if it is a Graph Tech, I'll just pop this off. I'll sand it down a little bit and we will glue it back on and we'll be good to go. Um, at the current moment, there is a pretty good amount of neck relief in there. I'll probably add a little bit of neck tension um, but other than that chip on the back, it doesn't really look like there's anything else uh, bad going on here. One thing I do have to swap out uh, on a Gibson Les Paul, I hate the kidney bean Grover tuner keys. Not my thing. And when it comes to Les Pauls, yes, as aesthetics are everything for me. Because if I'm, again, if I'm buying my dream guitars, if I'm spending this much, you know, this one was like 18 something after tax and shipping. Uh, it's gotta be perfect. And if it's not perfect, then it's gotta go because in my mind, I'm still a broke dude sleeping on somebody else's floor in their bedroom, just trying to get by. And if I'm gonna spend an insane amount of money on something, it's gotta be something that is just perfect in every aspect. So something as silly as tuner keys, those are gonna get changed out. But as far as everything else, I believe that Gibson has finally changed their hardware over to aluminum. They're no longer using the zinc uh, bridge and tailpiece. And then again, we've got the super dark rosewood fretboard. Uh, the frets all look good. Although the frets on this look a little small compared to my 2016. Yeah, the frets on this one are definitely smaller, which in my opinion, I, I like the larger frets. I've kind of become accustomed guitars like 
Schechter and ESP having the jumbo frets and everything. That's It's not a deal breaker for me, but I do enjoy the larger frets. So we'll see how this feels under the hand. But uh, behind me, I have three of my favorite amplifiers hooked up to one of my favorite cabinets. And uh, we got to plug this in and we got to make sure that it sounds good. We got to do our QC on it. Does it get belligerent? Let's find out. All right, guys, so we have three of the best amplifiers on the planet, according to me, AKA nobody, ready to be ripped through with the new Les Paul here. We are going into one of my favorite cabinets. This is the Friedman BE 412. I've got an SM57 on the greenback and I have a Loughton Audio LA220 FET condenser on the V30. This is actually the combo that I use for a recent human animal recording and I really dig the way that it sounds. So that's what we're going with. We're gonna start on my newly acquired PV5150 block letter with all of the original tubes in it. It's what makes a block letter a block letter. There's another argument for you guys down in the comments. And I'm going to try to tune this thing up real quick. Uh, it's giving me trouble. It's got super thin, weak person strings on here. If you play nine to 42 you are a weak person and you should not reproduce. All right, we are seemingly in tune. Let's see how long that lasts with the current setup and strings on this guitar. Going through the 5150. I forgot to mention the stock pickups that are supposed to come in this guitar are the newer 60s burst buckers from Gibson. I have never liked burst buckers, so I am not expecting to like these pickups. Yes, pickups do matter. Again, meet me in the comments for fisticuffs. And uh, already off the bat, I'm not loving these. They're also unpotted, so they're noisy. And uh, they're a little bit stringy, a little bit bright on the top end and kind of thin, but we'll see if we can work around that a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, seems like this thing's gonna need an intonation. I'm not sure who owned this guitar before I did, but uh, bro, you're fucking up a little bit. The pickups are also super, super close to the strings, so I'm gonna back those down a little bit. <laughs> So, so far, not loving it through the 5150. It's like really gainy, but there's some weird stringiness, pokey frequencies to the top end. Uh, I can't wait. I already can't wait to put different strings on this thing and uh, file that nut down a little bit because these strings are hilariously high at the nut. And I'm also getting some slap off the frets up high because they have the bridge lowered down to get a low action. So the strings are almost going at like this as, as they approach the headstock. Uh, it's just, this is really poorly set up. So let's switch over to the Tremoverb because I'm really curious how this is gonna work on that amp. All right guys, Mesa Dual Rectifier Tremoverb. We are on the orange channel, still on that TS9. <laughs> Overall, 
I'm liking it through this amp a little bit better. The low end on these pickups is very, very punchy, but otherwise I'm not really digging the mids, not really digging the highs, and then being unpotted is definitely causing a lot of noise at the moment. Let's test it out on the uh, Jubilee and see how it does over here. A Gibson into a Marshall is like the tried and true formula for a great tone, so I have high hopes. <laughs> Last but not least, one riff in D standard. Guys, that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you for hanging out with me and checking out my new Les Paul. I'm super happy to have this in house. Overall, the guitar feels very resonant. It's well balanced, it plays well, as in there are no high frets or anything that I can tell as far as playing up and down the neck, but it definitely needs a new bridge pickup and it definitely needs new strings and to have that nut cut down a little bit so these strings aren't riding so high over that first and second fret. But yeah, guys, let me know what you thought. What do you think about this thing? Are you into the vintage looking Les Pauls like the one that I have here? God, that's beautiful. Looking at that in the screen, it's so pretty. Uh, or do you just not like them at all? Do you hate Gibsons as a company? Do you love the history of Gibsons and the Les Paul? Whatever it is, let me know down in the comments. I'm always curious to see what you guys have to say about this stuff. Thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. You're gonna see this video, this guitar in future videos, uh, cause I'm gonna start comparing it to some of the other Les Paul style offerings on the market in a new video series that I'm gonna be doing here and uh, basically see, can we get something that I love as much as a almost $3,000 Gibson Les Paul here in the sub $1,000 category? I'm really curious, honestly, to see if I can find anything else out there that matches this. And I hope that you guys will join me for the journey because I think that you might be interested to see what we come up with. And then finally, if you wanna help me be able to afford this guitar and other guitars like it for the channel, down in the description of this video are my affiliate links like Sweetwater and Zounds, anything you guys click down there greatly, greatly helps me out, and I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.